it's within the female. So the whole temple of Solomon, the holy is, is the male phallic and the most holy is the head of the penis and it goes into the female which is called the temple of Solomon, the temple of life. And consequently Solomon's temple was merely a representation of the sex act. Now here we have, uh, yeah, down at the bottom it's showing the same thing. So this is why you will find on churches a big phallic. So when you drive by churches, you see these things, they're called colonnades. Colonnade. Incidentally, that's why Colin Powell, uh, ABC News, uh, about a year ago, said, uh, it was interesting, they said Colin Powell, his actual real name was Collins Powell. Collins Powell. But all the politicians around Washington, D.C. thought he was so full of it, they called him Colin Powell. That's where he gets it, Colin Powell. And that, that is a representation of the male phallic, and it's on a church. Again, this is why you priests have to go to a seminary. Here it is again, here's another temple. You can tell the layout of the temple. <clears throat> no, that's not Bill Clinton. This is a, this is a, uh, this is a uh, Egyptian god named Min, M-I-N. And you'll see the Egyptians climbing the pole. It's called the ceremony of climbing the pole of Min. The pole, of course, is the representation of the male phallic. One of the most important is that of the maypole. This relic of pagan tree worship originated, originally represented the cosmic axis and the phallic power of the sky god. And here are dancing around the maypole and have no idea in the world that women are dancing around the male phallic. And I think, uh, and yeah, and then Christians once a year in September have something called See You at the Pole. And have no idea in the world that it's the same old idea of See You at the Pole dancing around the male phallic. These are called scepters of power. These are symbols of male power. <laughs> yeah, that's what it means. So when you see these symbols in their hands, it represents the dominance of the world by the male sexual principle. Okay? Hmm. Okay. Even the playing cards like the jack has. That's why it's called a jack. It goes back to the Bible, jack and the pole. And here, here's something we call the pillar of life. You'll see these two pillars? There are always two pillars representing the male phallic in the old ancient Phoenician Canaanite system. There are always two phallic. You'll see them there. There we have the sacred stone phallic pillars. Always you will see the now, these were penis head gods in Assyria. There were always two of them. In India, in Japan, in Rome, Pompeii, in Islam. You'll see the two phallic pillars on both sides. Incidentally, the churches and many of the old architecture in the Middle East and churches today all have pointed glass windows long pointed glass windows and pointed do arch doors. The pointed glass windows represent the female opening, the pointed arch. And, of course, the twin phallic pillars. And you see it everywhere. Here we have the body of Osiris. Let's see, the sky is supported on the bottom line. It says the sky is supported by two phallic pillars. And you see that everywhere. Incidentally, the Washington Monument is a phallic symbol. 
and it connects, it's the male phallic, and it connects to the female ovaries, the oval office. The Egyptian idea, the Egyptian convention of twin phallic pillars at the temple gate was copied by the temple at Jerusalem where the right pillar was named Jachin, God makes him firm, and the left pillar was named Boaz, eagerness and strength. What are we talking about? Jachin makes him firm and eagerness and strength? That's in the Bible, 1 Kings. The temple of Solomon represented sex, period. And there are the, the temple, there it is again. You'll see the temple and the two phallic pillars and Solomon's temple. There they are, Jekin and Boaz. Two male phallic pillars in front of the temple. Incidentally, that's where the word temple comes from. The house of God, or the house of El, a temp El. The house of El, the house of the god of Saturn, the temp El. And on all the temp Els, you always had the twin phallic pillars. There it is in downtown, on Wilshire in downtown Los Angeles, the synagogue <coughs> has the two phallic pillars. You see it all over the world. All over the earth, you see twin phallic pillars going all the way back to the Phoenician Canaanites. This is over in Pasadena at the, uh, uh, at the British Israel Masonic uh, Ambassador College. What is that? What is the symbolism there? Anybody, uh, am I the only one seeing what the symbolism there? There's the king with this phallic symbol on both sides of the... Now, pipes were also, the musical instruments, both flute and reed pipes, had a place in primitive fertility rites owing to the phallic appearance. And uh, the second line goes on to say, uh, singles and double pipes, among other instruments, are depicted in the Mes Mesopotamian art from the third century millennium and then it was also adopted into Christian theolo theology. So pipes were, where does it show that it was a phallic? Yeah, the third line down on the pipe. As a symbol of male sexuality, it occurs in Greco-Roman and Renaissance art. And so the pipes, and this is why we have something called a male organ, the male organ, the twin pipes. When you, you know, when you see the Mormon church with the male organ, just remember that's what it all means. That's where it came from. The twin phallic pipes. Now, enough of that is enough. We'll go on to the next one. Um, again, while I'm, while I'm doing this, is I'm showing you how things we think we understand and we're used to seeing never even occurred to you what these things mean. Let's see. This one goes from 27. All right. Okay. As far back as the ancient petroglyphs with the sun symbol, this is from the Bronze Age. This goes back thousands of years. You will see carved on stones in, uh, in Russia and all over Europe as uh, an interesting symbol. It's, it's the symbol of the sun, petroglyphs with the sun symbol. So that's an ancient, going back to the Bronze Age. Um, you will see this ancient sun symbol. This is the Nordic sun symbol. The cross on the circle. This is why, incidentally, you drive by churches today, you know, you'll see many churches have the big cross and a circle in the middle. The circle in the middle is the sun, the sun that dies on the cross of the zodiac between north, east, south, and west. Incidentally, if you take north, east, west, and south, that spells news. 
Anything that happens in the world is news, north, east, west, and south. Um, 